Arbery. Let's get analysis from Defense Attorney Chan Wu, CNN Legal Analyst Elliot Williams, and CNN Legal Analyst Jennifer Rogers. Uh, thanks to all of you. We appreciate it. Um, Elliot, I, I want to begin with your reaction to this jury finding all three uh, defendants guilty of murdering uh, Ahmad Arbery. Uh, we heard just a few moments ago from Lee Merritt that, you know, the, should Americans have more faith in the justice system tonight? This was an anomaly, he said. Uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Right. Look, I don't think racism or bias or anything else uh, is changed after this verdict. This was certainly the right verdict by one jury, but, you know, no one should get complacent. And the very fact that this crime happened in the first place speaks to very dark um, factors that exist in American life today. So let's put that aside. Now, the, the manner in which the jury... Uh, came to their findings here uh, is, is quite significant in that they broke down um, convictions for each of the defendants showing that they were really taking this seriously, right? Three different defendants with three different levels of culpability, levels of blame, with uh, Travis McMichael, the person who actually pulled the trigger, getting convicted for of both a felony and malice murder, two different types of murder, his father not getting the same conviction, and then, of course, Roddy Bryan. So it, it just shows that the jury put some thought into this. I think it would be much harder to take this verdict seriously if they had found everyone guilty of everything or no one guilty of anything. They clearly worked through this very methodically uh, and, and came to the right choice, I think. Absolutely. And Jennifer, how significant is it that it's not just the man who pulled the trigger, but all three of the men who played a role in the killing of Ahmaud Arbery who were found guilty of murder today? Well, it's really significant, Jim. I mean, the, the law does allow for these convictions, obviously, on a felony murder theory and an aiding and abetting theory. But you can see how a jury might say, well, listen, the other two didn't make the decision to pull the trigger. Only Travis McMichael did that. But I think when you take the evidence as a whole, and the prosecutor was so good about weaving together the pieces of evidence and making a really compelling argument to this jury that they were all responsible. They all chased him. Two of them had guns. There were two trucks penning him in and not letting him escape. You know, it really was a group concerted effort here, and I think the jury's uh, results ultimately reflected that. Yeah, Shannon, I thought the prosecutor was excellent uh, throughout this trial. I mean, it was just sort of a uh, just the facts kind of presentation. Uh, she's been widely praised for her performance. Um, she, she said this verdict was based on the facts and evidence. We heard from her earlier today, uh, and that this is proof that the jury system works. What, was that your takeaway, too? What, what were your thoughts? I think she did a good job, um, but as has been eloquently put by the Arbery family, you know, this is an indication of other issues uh, in our system. This is not a time, particularly for us, those of us in the legal profession, to be complacent, to sit around, pat ourselves on the back, saying it's a great system. These men who did this murder, they're the lineal descendants of the racism and the violence in our history, and unfortunately, our system is also part of that lineal heritage. And this case and others, like Rittenhouse, shows us there's so much we need to do to improve our system, to remedy that history of racism. We don't even have a federal anti-lynching law in the books, and we need to reform the peremptory strike system just as two examples. So it's an important time to remember that certainly legal justice happened in this case. Good job by the prosecution, but there's so much more to do. And we're looking at video of the uh, convicted defendants leaving in handcuffs. Uh, they'll be sentenced uh, in a matter of days, um, and we'll be on top of that, of course. Uh, Elliot, before they handed down this verdict, the jury re-watched uh, the video of Arbery's killing, uh, which I thought was an important moment. Uh, to, it sort of gave us a window into their deliberations and what they were, what they were going through. Uh, what did you make of that? Uh, that moment, and, and just how important was the video evidence in a case like this? I mean, I, I, I think it has to be said that if it wasn't for the video, perhaps we would not be here today right. with and this kind of verdict. No, and frankly, that was Roddy Bryan's point that, you know, we only had this because uh, I was the one who was kind enough to take the video of this man um, being slaughtered. Look, you know, that could have gone the other way, uh, looking at the video evidence. And I, it, it's, you know, at our great risk, do we try to divine what jurors are thinking at, at any given point? Because so much of the compelling evidence from the prosecution was about the things that led up to the video, why these guys were there in the first place, why they got their guns, why, you know, the, the 911 call, there's a black man running 
happening in the neighborhood. All of those things were very compelling evidence that sort of poked holes in the defense's case uh, that, that they had a reason to make this stop or this arrest. The video itself in isolation, a juror could have looked, could have looked at that and said, well, this is a scuffle. You know, in the, in the heat of the moment, it's hard to know what happened. So you just don't know what they were thinking. Again, as I said a little bit earlier, the fact that they cut up the three different verdicts, as Jennifer and Shan have both noted, the fact that they cut up the, um, the convictions in, in, the, in the ways that they did shows that they really were paying close attention here and paid close attention to the jury instructions and the law and really followed it. And Jennifer, all three men now face uh, life in prison sentences, potentially. Uh, do you think it's likely that these men will spend the rest of their lives behind bars? And, and what, what message do these convictions and those potential sentences, uh, what, what message does that send? Well, Jim, they likely will spend life behind bars. The judge does have the option of granting them the possibility of parole after 30 years, but that, of course, would then be a decision of the parole board. Look, I, I think it sends a strong message, of course. I mean, you know, not just the person who pulled the trigger, but all of these men who just really just slaughtered Ahmad Arbery for running in the streets and not being willing to do what no one thought he had any reason to do, which is stop and be interrogated by... So I think it sends a strong message, and it's a good thing it happened today. All right, absolutely. All right, Elliot Williams, Jennifer Rogers, Shan Wu, uh, thanks uh, for breaking that. What a momentous uh, day and a, just a huge case um, that we're all going to remember for a very long time. Uh, thanks for all that analysis. We appreciate thanks, it. Jim. Up next. Uh,